Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Previously, we worked on updating our NPCs to go ahead and start animating and moving around our scene. If you missed the previous videos, there'll be links in the video description of the source code up to this point, as well as complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so to go ahead and add in our animations, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and open up our animations JSON file. Uh, so, if we can go into our assets in our data folder, we'll need to go ahead and define our animations we want to use for our NPCs. And so what we'll do is let's go ahead and copy this block of code here for our slash. Go ahead and paste it here. Then what we want to do is we're going to do NPC, and we'll say 1, and we'll do right. We'll need to go ahead and define our frame rate, which will be 6. Uh, for a repeat, we're going to go ahead and do negative 1. Our delay will be 0. We'll go ahead and set yo-yo to be true. In our asset key, we're going to use NPC. And what we need to do is we need to define our frames, similar like what we did for our player here. So let's copy that. And we'll go ahead and paste that above our frame rate. And for our frames, we're going to want 28, 22, and then 29. And now we just need to go ahead and define our other direction. So let's copy this and we'll go ahead and paste it. And so we're going to have our up for our frames. We will have 26, 21, and 27. And then we need to go ahead and do our down. And for this, we need to go ahead and do 24. 20 and 25. All right, so what we're doing here is we're creating three animations for our NPC. Um, so real quick, uh, if you remember, for our NPCs, uh, we have for this sprite sheet here. And for our NPCs, we only have one frame that's tied to our left and right. And what we're doing is we're using our flip X property to go ahead and flip our sprite in the other direction. So for our animations, we only have three to go ahead and match these based on when they're walking over here. And so what we did is for our NPC1 character that moves around, we've defined our keys using NPC with the value, the name of our NPC, and then our various directions. And then we just referenced our frames that are associated in the sprite sheet here. And so for our, our animations, we only have two frames. And so what we do is we use our left here, we grab our idle, and then we go ahead and do our right here. All right, so now that we've defined our animations. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and actually update our NPC character to go ahead and update uh, the animation that's playing as well as their idle frame. And so what we need to do is let's jump over to our player class and we're going to go ahead and copy our logic for moving our character uh, that we did in our player class. Because uh, we'll need to do similar functionality here in our NPC. So what we'll do is we'll come down to the bottom of our class and let's go ahead and add in that logic. And so for moving our character, what we want to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and call our base move character in our character class like we were before. And then we need to go ahead and determine the direction that the character is moving towards. And so if the character is going down or right or up, what we want to do is go ahead and just grab the animation name that has that direction value and we'll play that animation. If they're going left, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and grab our right animation and then flip our X property. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and get rid of our direction left here. And what we'll do for if it's down, right, or up, we're going to check to see if our animation is playing, if our current key is equal to our NPC, and we'll do 1, and we'll do this direction. And then we need to go ahead and update that name here. And so we'll do NPC 1, and then this direction. And so what this will do is it's going to go ahead and play our animation of the new direction we're headed. And we want to go ahead and set our flip X property. So we'll do our phaser game object and we're going to do set flip X. And we're going to set the equal to false uh, because we want to face the direction of our actual sprite. Otherwise, if we are going in the direction dot left, we need to go ahead and use that specific animation for our right. So we're just going to copy this block of code here. We're going to go ahead and paste it. 
and we are going to change this from this direction to just be direction.right. Then we'll also go ahead and reference that down here. And for our flip X, we need to set that to true. Then that way we flip our sprite. All right, so if we go ahead and save, we come back to our scene. We'll see right away now when our NPC moves, it's actually rotating and facing the direction that it's actually moving. However, we still have that issue. Once they get back to the beginning of our route, they stop moving. All right, so to go ahead and fix the issue where our NPC stops moving when they get to the end of the path, what we need to do is, ah, yeah, so after we update our position, uh, so when the next position is undefined and we update our next position to be our beginning position, we need to reset our current path index. So we'll do our current path index. We're going to set it equal to zero. So now what should happen is when our NPC gets to the end of the path, um, we should go ahead and reset our current index to be zero. And then that will start incrementing again to have our NPC move. All right, so the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add some safety checks for when our NPC runs into our player. And so what we can see right now is when our player blocks the path of our NPC and messes up the update pattern that the NPC needs to follow when they're moving. And so what happens is eventually it course corrects and then our NPC starts following our path again. Uh, but instead, what we want to do is if our NPC encounters our player and we're blocking the path, they would stop moving. Uh, so go ahead and fix that. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to check our NPC's previous position uh, by taking their current path index and checking that coordinate with our current game object's coordinate. And if they are the same, then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll just update our next position to go ahead and be that previous position that they should have moved to. So to go ahead and do that, we're just going to come above our if statement here and we'll do const. We're going to add a variable for our previous position. And so if our previous position is going to be equal to our NPC path and we want to use our current path index. And then we're going to go ahead and do our check. So we have our previous position dot X is equal. So if our previous position dot X does not equal our game objects dot x position or our previous position y value does not equal our game objects current y position then what we know is that we have not actually moved from position so we're just going to go ahead and update next position to be equal to this dot npc path and our current path index Otherwise, we'll go ahead and run our code that we ran before. Uh, so if we go ahead and wrap that in an else statement, we'll go ahead and test our changes. Uh, so with our player character, if we go ahead and try blocking our NPC's path, what should happen is our NPC should stop moving. And then once our player moves, it should continue moving along that path. All right, and so one last thing we're going to do with our movement is we're going to go ahead and introduce some randomness. Uh, so currently, our NPC just keeps moving con constantly throughout our game, and we want to go ahead and make this a little bit more dynamic and where our NPC will randomly move along that path and just not be constantly moving like this. And so to go ahead and do that, what we'll need to do is we'll need to keep track of the last time that we moved our character and then compare that to the current time. And if it's past some type of threshold, then we'll go ahead and move our character again. So what we'll want to do is come to the top of our class and we're going to add a new property. And so for this property, we're going to go ahead and call this last movement time. And it's going to be a type of number. So let's just copy that and go ahead and paste it. And then we'll go ahead and come down to our constructor and we'll go ahead and assign a value. And so for our last movement time, instead of setting it to zero, we're going to go ahead and grab a random number. And then that way, when our game first starts, our NPC doesn't start moving right away. Instead, there'll be some type of delay before the NPC starts moving around. So to go ahead and get a random number, we're going to use some of the built-in utilities to phasers. We'll do phaser math dot between. And what this can be used for is providing two values, and it's going to go ahead and give us a random number between those two values. And so we're going to go ahead and get a number of milliseconds. And so we're going to do 3,500 and 5,000. So somewhere between 3.5 seconds and 5 seconds will be our movement time. And then so with our movement time, what we can do is in our update method, before we do any of our logic for moving our player around, what we can do is we can check our 
movement time, if it's less than our current time right now, then we'll go ahead and do our logic. And so we'll do if our last movement time is less than time, let's run all of the code that we ran before. And so we'll just need to go ahead and wrap this in our bracket. And so what we're doing here is when we call our update method for our character class, we are getting the current timestamp of what actually happened. And so if we go ahead and save and refresh, we'll see right away our NPC is not moving, but then after that delay, it starts moving around our scene. And so what's happening is when we call the update method for our character class, we are passing in the current timestamp and since the scene started. So how many uh, milliseconds have passed? And and then eventually the number of milliseconds will be greater than our last movement timestamp, uh, which will then cause our NPC to start moving. And so what we'll want to do is after we move our character, we want to go ahead and update our last movement time. So go ahead and do that. We'll come down to the bottom of our code after we move our character, and we're going to go ahead and assign our last movement time equal to time, plus we want to go ahead and add another random value to it. Uh, so that way it'll be sometime in the future. And so what we'll do is we'll do our phaser, we'll do our math, and we'll do between. And we will go ahead and do two seconds and five seconds. And so if we go ahead and save, what should happen now is after our character moves, they should stop, pause, wait some type of delay, go ahead and move again, and then go ahead and repeat. And so by adding in this slight delay, it gives us a new movement pattern for our character and just uh, it slows them down a little bit. And so what we could do now is if we wanted an NPC that could be running at all times, we could remove this check here for certain NPCs. Or if we wanted to move with this delay, we can use this logic here. All right, with that, that actually brings this video to an end. Uh, so now that we've wrapped up our logic tied to our NPC and our NPC movement, Next, what we're going to focus on is we're going to go ahead and stop working on our world scene and we're going to start adding in some new functionality to our game. And so we'll be adding in a title screen, an option screen, and we'll be seeing how we can toggle some options such as updating the speed of our animations or skipping animations, and we'll see how we can tie that to our battle scene. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the Klee source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video on the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see the links on your screen now.